record. Hey, <laughs> so, um, well, thank you for having me for this time. Um, so what I know about you, like overall yes. is like, yeah, you live in Vegas, private money lender. And as you told me recently, you are planning to, um, you have some detailed plans to uh, retire soon. So we can learn a little bit about those. And uh, like, I would also like to learn about like, what is your goal in private money lending or private money partnering or whatever. And maybe okay. if there is a way there I can help, like either with systems or with deals and those things, right? Which is more like my skill set. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Ken Aoki. Uh, I'm like you said, I'm in Las Vegas. Um, I have been in many different industries, um, everything from insurance to uh logistics, trucking, um, real estate. I own multiple restaurants here in Las Vegas. Um, I own multiple, I've partnered and, and I'm not own, sorry, I've partnered in or invested in multiple different restaurants. I own one outright. Um, and then I also, um, have partnered in multiple different businesses too. So, nice. um, yeah. And, kind of on that last leg of me finalizing some plans to um, get some property in Mexico. So that's, that's kind of where our, where we want to uh, retire and uh, yeah. And just having conversation with you and getting ideas of exactly where in Mexico we want to retire, but we love Mexico. So we just want to figure out um, how we're going to, you know, how we're going to buy our property. And hopefully that's going to be completely paid off so that we don't have to worry about anything there. And then, um, yeah, and then just live out our, our days in Mexico and flying back and forth to America if we just have like appointments or anything. So yeah, that's that's what we will probably do for the next couple of years of my marriage. You know, like live here or like Colombia, like uh somewhere in Latin America and just fly to the U.S. for specific things. You know, and for like a week, two weeks, whatever is needed, and then right. go back and live there. And then at some point when we decide to like another phase. Uh, move somewhere else but uh we're open like uh to see where <laughs> yeah no that that's that's awesome like if you can do this virtual like this is the best thing the best thing about um everything we've been through the past couple of years is that uh virtual work has expanded a lot so that that has yeah. given us you know that that yeah. gives you the ability to do what you're doing anywhere so. yeah and you joined sub two like a few months ago right Yes, when uh, it was, I think March, so almost, uh, almost like eight months, seven months. Um, wow. Yeah, so not new, but not old either, right? Yeah, so yeah. been in for almost a year um, and done a, a bunch of deals with sub two people. But before that, I was already doing a bunch of deals. So um, this just brought another tool to the tool belt. Um, okay. Which allowed, yeah, which allowed me to expand out my business. So so were you in real estate, like with all the other businesses? Like the restaurant uh, yes. businesses? Okay. Well, uh, well, not not so much with the restaurant businesses, but with different other businesses, there was um, a real estate component to some of the businesses. Um, you know, so like a yeah. self storage, we, we, you know, we invested in a self storage, which had the real estate component, but the business component with that. Um, we also, uh, we also did, you know, Airbnbs, we had uh midterm, we have midterm rentals, we have uh, partnered up with different, um, people on long-term rentals. So, wow. um, yeah, we, that, you know, it, it's an, you know, when you, when you start making some money, you got to figure out yeah. how to not, not pay how taxes. To deploy that, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. How to deploy it, make sure not to pay taxes without, without at the same time, not losing money, you know? So 100%. yeah. And which of those asset classes do you prefer so far? Um, It always changes because the rules change so much. Okay. So we loved Airbnb. Like Airbnb was amazing. Like this past couple years of Airbnb was like, it was such a, it was a bonanza, you know? And, yeah. um, but with all the regulation, with all the oversupply, with all the problems, um, it's just, it's going away, you know? So, uh, Las Vegas is really clamping down on all the Airbnbs. So we're okay. going from 13,000 
Airbnbs in, um, in you know, we're in, a, we're in Las Vegas, but it's a, a something called Clark County that we're in. Okay. So that's going to go from 13,000 to probably 1,300. Wow. Yeah. So 90%, yeah, 90% of the Airbnbs are all going to be go disappear. So we're right in the middle of that. Um, so that, that business is just gone, you know, that you just, you know, they have too the regulations are so stiff that you're going to be like, okay, if you get one, nobody within a thousand feet of you can get one. So, you know, and that's a full 360 degrees of you. So it's going to wipe out a lot of competition. It's going to wipe out a lot. So the people that get it are going to be great, but a lot of people are going to be hurting, you know, yeah. soon. So, wow, that's wild. Yeah. So you're moving more into like medium rentals or self storage nowadays? Uh medium term rentals. Um yeah, like just different exit. I've been entertaining different exit strategies, such as uh you know, I haven't done one yet, but pad split is interesting. Uh rent by the room, um yeah. midterm rental. You know, we, we already had one midterm midterm rental, but we're gonna have to start looking deeper into that. Um and then and then, you know, just uh, the the finding good deals and, you know, either keeping those good deals with long term rental and with more of a payback component rather than um, or pay down component rather than, um, you know, an upfront, like uh, just making money upfront kind of yeah, a deal. Yeah. So and are you operating any of those like deals or more like a partnering on the uh, uh, lending side? I'm more on the lending side. So I'm more a uh, limited partner in a lot of those um, slash JV. Um, so like I'll have my, you know, I'll, I'll be able to, I'll be able to consult and things like that, but I'm not um, majority of those. I'm not day-to-day -day operations. I have no idea what's going on. So, well, that's pretty good. I mean, I want to yeah. be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, nice. I mean, that's actually, I mean, if you're planning to retire in a couple of years, I mean, this is the way to go, you know, find, find, right. find people investing them and and like just checking them like uh are we making money how much and try to deploy the right capital in the right place right and uh enjoy your drink in Mexico. exactly <laughs> so we have um i used to i started the business by being active but i've realized that being um a limited partner and on the funding side it's way it, it fits my personality way better so i can sit here you know actually um underwrite deals all day long that are actually okay. going on rather than hypotheticals yeah. theoreticals or you know talking to people that might not be serious or might be serious you know so yeah. Sorry. So yeah. No, no, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> He's so needy today. I don't know why. Um hey, that's wild. That's and what do you like tell me more about that? Like when you see a deal, like what do you look for? Like are you more like a on, how when does a deal make sense to you? Like what cash and cash return are you looking for? Or what kind of entrepreneur are you looking for to partner or like a what do you see to give it a yes or a no? It all depends. Um, okay. So like timing is a big thing. Yeah. Um, and then the deal is another component. And then the resume of the um, operator is kind of the third component of it. Um, so timing meaning, hey, do I actually need depreciation this year? You know, so if I need depreciation this year, I might take a little bit of a haircut on some other factors. Um, to kind of participate in that depreciation. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to lose money on the deal, but I am I might not want as much cash flow or as much, um, you know, I can negotiate the appreciation a little bit more, you know, yeah. um, you know, th things, components like that. Um, the second part would be, you know, the, the actual deal, like the deal, some deals come with high equity and, um, you know, the, the money I bring is going to be more, you know, um, like a bridge loan or more of like a, you know, like a, a temporary loan just to hold the place, you know? So in those situations, that might be more that of a quick in and out situation where, you know, um, I get a certain dollar amount for being able to loan that money or yeah. other times if they want me to keep me in the deal, you know, I'll look into like, Hey, is, is this a high cash flowing deal? Is this a future appreciation deal? Um, you know, or is this something that, um, 
you know, like with Mexico, if I find a good deal, it's like, hey, I, I'm going to retire there. So this that could be a long term deal where my money would stay because I know, you know, if we do Airbnb and it's paying off a loan or giving me cash flow that I can pay more down, you know, pay that pay more ag against that um, property or something, you know. So, yeah. yeah. And then finally, it's like the resume of the person, because if this person has been doing, you know, has done 20 fix and flips this year that's way more comforting than somebody that finds a great deal has and hasn't done one, you know? 100%. So, you know, I, I'd rather take that guy that understands, Hey, um, you know, understands the, the day to day of what's going on rather than, you know, find a one-off deal that could go bad in a lot of ways. So. hundred percent. And like, do you go after like JVing or like, only JVing or also like lending money with the interest rate and uh, for like six months, 12 months, whatever. Uh, both, both. both? Um, it all depends. You know, okay. um, I prefer, I prefer JVing on projects yeah. because, um, you know, like I need, de I need depreciation. I need, um, you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, but um, there's deals where sometimes private money is going to be the best solution for both parties. So, you know, sometimes, um, you know, uh, my private money deals lately have been more situational rather than deal based. So meaning, hey, I need to pay off my private money lender because, you know, a lot of private money lenders are a one year deal. Yeah. You know, so after that one year, if they don't want to re uh, renew the deal, they got to have to go find another project, you know, another private money lender. So but in that situation, I would be more, you know, I would do a situation where I would put a second on the loan on the lien or second on the property or um, a different property, you know, because sometimes, you know, they're, they're in a DTI situation where they, they can't have a second um, because of the existing lender. So, okay. you know, we'll find another property to put a second on and then, um, you know, with a personal guarantee. So that way we can, you know, somehow make it work because they might, they might've underestimated the amount of time they needed it. Got so, it, and yeah. what is it that you need right now? Like you just find good operators that have good deals. Um, what do you spend your time on? Uh, I spend most of my time just underwriting deals. Okay. So, and it's everything. I don't have a lend box. So, you know, everybody's like, Hey, what's your lend box? My lend box is a good deal. And that could be, you know, and that, I know it's a generic <laughs> answer, yeah. but it's a good deal because it, you know, if somebody says, Hey, lend me 50,000 because there's $150,000 of equity in this house. And I just need the 50,000 for the EMD or the, you know, or the, you know, just for the renovation for 30 days or something like that, you know, and, and, and we underwrite it and see that there is actually $150,000 of equity before we do anything to the property. Hey, that's a great deal, you know, or, you know, and that's when we would come in as, Hey, is that going to be private money or is that going to be um, a partnership? Because a lot of times on the partnerships, there's just not, it's non existent because if they're trying to sell within 45 days to 60 days, like what, you know, the private money is going to be, you know, like a, a lump sum private money is going to be better than JVing on a project or anything like that. Yeah. So, because I want to be like, hey, you use it the way you need to use it or get it done. But, you know, we, we set the terms of the length of time and, interest rate and everything and the and the the payback so. what about like like wraps i mean i'm learning how to do wraps and everything but it's kind of like in between right because you like you need the money for a short period of time like 60 days or whatever to find the right. wrap buyer holding costs and everything and then you sell so you don't have an asset to depreciate however you keep some cash flow for like 30 right. years or something like it, is that something that you will rather do you like private money lending or JV on the cash flow for the for, on the notes? It, it it all depends because the problem is a lot of deals won't work with a 12% interest rate. Okay. So so a lot of times somebody will say, hey look, um let's JV on this one instead of private money because I can't pay you interest. But if I'm not going to get interest from the deal, then I gotta figure you got to let me know how I'm going to get paid from this deal. Mm -hmm. So you know, I like wraps because I'm not going to stay in with my money on a wrap because, yeah. hey, I will put the money in. But once we get a wrap buyer, that 10 percent down payment should come directly back to me to yeah. get me to out of the deal. The loan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then at that point, we're all both of us would be out of the deal. 
um, but we would be participating in the cash flow slash possible, you know, if, if that deal ever falls through and it comes back to us, it, it would still be under both of our names at that point. So, yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. interesting. But that, that's what I'm saying. There's no, a, a lot of people want a, a straight answer, but yeah. ev two rap buyers or two yeah. rap deals, uh -huh. I could, I would, they, they, I've had two rap deals that are same purchase price, but I've structured them both completely different. One as a PML, one as a PMP, because okay. The PML, the first person had more than enough room to pay for the interest, more than enough equity to make sure that that deal was secured. So yeah. that PML was more, that was more advantageous for both of us, where the second option, there was no room to pay the interest, but the money would come out in 45 days once we sold the wrap. Yeah. So that's when, you know, that's when I would be able to participate in the cash flows. So, you know, and then, and then. So that that's actually more interest because I don't have any money in the deal. So I'm getting, I don't even know how, what, what you call that. That's infinite, like infinite interest. return. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Infinite return. But in the other situation, I was, you know, I, I gave it at a 12% interest rate, but I had a plenty of equity to, you know, secure my money again. So it was like more of a secure deal. So I was willing to take less money, uh, a less interest rate. But, um, you know, so that that's. Yeah. How you much know, equity do you say uh, it will like? Do you need uh, to be to feel secure as a private money lender? I mean, it all like I said. Sorry, I, I know I keep saying <laughs> it, it's it, fine. It all, I'm just right. like uh, trying different questions. No, no, absolutely. It, it always depends, but it's gonna be, you know, one to one is always great. So yeah. if I'm putting seventy thousand dollars in the deal and I get seventy thousand or close to seventy thousand dollars of equity great you know what i mean like yeah. because then i'm i'm protected because if anything yeah. goes wrong i i can you know i can i can get the property deeded back to me and i you know i'll take a hit with a couple of the closing costs or you know like some of that but, but not, you know, I'm, not I'm too roughly, bad yeah exactly i'm still roughly there and i all, always have the opportunity to control the property and see what exit strategy i'm going to do with that you know i could always wholesale it back to another person um rent it out as long term renter things like that um yeah. And are you but, using your own money to like uh, do these projects? So you have a limit on how many projects you can do at the same time? Or like yes do you and, have other like people's money? Uh, primarily, I use my money. But if it's big deals, I always bring it to um, – I have uh, an investor group that I work with. So in the restaurant business, you got to have a really big investor group. So – these guys, you know, it's like we we all invest a little bit in every restaurant. So that way, no it's one safer. ever takes it. Yeah. Exactly. It's a 95% failure rate restaurants, you know, in five years. So, you know, no matter how good the idea is, you know, you're taking a huge risk with that money. So um, you want to bring in as many partners as possible. But so, you know, I, it, you know, there was a there was an EMD for. Three hundred thousand um, dollars that came across my deal that came across my desk, and you know, so I didn't, you know, I was already in a couple deals, so I didn't have the money. So I went to them and said, "Hey, who wants to participate in this? This is, you know, we could JV and split up the EMD um, for the thirty days that it was going to take, um, and you know, split the proceeds on that." So nice. And yeah. how long does it usually takes you to make a decision? Like either, yes, I, I'll go on and bring the money or no, like I'm not the best investor or um, it's an immediate. No, the no's are very easy, nice. but the yeses are the yeses take a little bit of time because okay. a lot of people don't know how to, the way that you would make an offer to on a house, let's say a sub two deal is not is the way you should almost be giving me an offer also at on the funding side you know so okay. the story of what this is about why the distress is there the interest rate you know the the terms of the exit like how long are you going to need my money what interest rate are you going to give me or what cash flow are we doing what depreciation appreciation like all of those terms should be almost written down almost like a letter of intent to me yeah yeah. So that we have a basis of negotiation. So I could just be like, hey, sometimes if the deal's good enough, I'll just say, hey, Armando, yep, let's do it. Or, 
you know what, this Armada, this doesn't work because of this. If you can work with me and give me a bigger percentage on this, we can absolutely go forward with this. But there's rarely a good time. There's rarely a a time when somebody just gives me their first offer and we we just say, oh yeah, you know, because they they're not looking at it from your eyes. Yeah. Exactly. They're they're not seeing where my financial position is right now or what my what where I'm hurting. So um, you know, like Pay says, right? Where where my bunnies are, right? Yeah. So um that's that's kind of where that's how um, you know, that that's why it would take a little bit of time or slash you know, back and forth between me and you to say, hey, this is how it's going to work. So, yeah. but the easiest way for both parties will be just to, for me to draft an offer. And then you can just like, uh, like, yeah, I think yeah, that absolutely. was a bit of the process, right? Rather than just yes. sending you the address and be like, hey, <laughs> what can you offer me? <laughs> yeah, that uh, will definitely take you longer. If, I tell you all, will, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I tell all my partners, hey, look, private money partners, I say, look, just have, 20 to 30 people like me and just have put them on an email chain and just every time you have a deal, send it out to all 30 of your partners. Because um, I, I was talking to somebody yesterday and I told them, hey, a deal I would do in Las Vegas might not be a deal I would do in South Carolina, 100%. you know? Yeah. So I don't know much about South Carolina. So I don't care if I'm looking at the ARV or anything like that, if I really just don't know the area, you know, because it, uh, you know, you, you just gotta, you, you, I've never been there. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I can't get a feel of it, you know? Yeah. So it would have to be such a good deal. And the numbers make so much good sense that I, you know, I would just be like, yeah, I would do it. But in Las Vegas, I know everything. Like I know every square inch of this town. So if you tell me, hey, I want to do this deal, I will tell you exactly why it will or won't won't work. And I I might even take a smaller, um, you know, better, uh, you know, I might take less terms because I know it's going to, the, the security of it is way better. So, yeah. Love it. Love it. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for like, uh, you opened my eyes uh, and kind of invited me to see like on the other side from the private right. lenders, you know, and try to like um, build and, and yeah, like pitch like any deals, like uh, and try to make it easy for them, a decision. Uh, I think yeah. that will probably make me stand out as, as a, like a, someone who is asking for money than someone else who is just like a texting. <laughs> it's funny because you guys are so good at finding these deals and you're so good at like n talking with them, empathizing with them, coming up with terms that work with both of you. But then it almost seems like everyone stops at that point and then ha becomes hard headed about the funding side saying, Hey, this is the only way I will fund this deal, or this is the only way I will accept funding for this deal and things like that, where it has to be a negotiation from the, you know, from the seller all the way to the funding partner, you know? So just because yeah. you think this is a great deal and this is the way it should be funded and all this stuff, it, it you, you're just automatically dismissing everyone else's, um, needs you know yeah so 100%. yeah so you, you like i said you might you might catch me at with one month left in the year saying hey i don't even care about any of the other parts of it i just need 100 percent depreciation and so if this cash is as long as this thing doesn't negative cash flow i'll i don't even care i'll i don't need, need cash flow i just need the depreciation all of the depreciation on it and then uh, that yeah. might be the thing that gets the deal done. And then you might not need it because you're just like, hey, my my taxes are good for the year. So why do I care if the, I I get any of the depreciation on this? Yep. You know? Yep. yep. So th that's that's why you got to negotiate. You know, you, you got to talk the same way that you were talking to the seller of the property as you are to the funder of the loan. Because th that way you're just like, look, this is just a letter of intent. But call me if something else will work or not work, you know? So... Yeah. Wow. Wow. You truly opened my eyes <laughs> to this uh, <laughs> new world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Absolutely. I, I really appreciate this. And um, um, yeah, thank you. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, definitely.